Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, I wanted to quickly go through some key concepts around text labels and tooltips. So let's go ahead and set up a simple bar chart to start with. I'll go and take sales in the columns and subcategory in the rows. This will give me a bar chart by subcategory. I'll sort it in descending order and I'll fix the and I'll fit the height to the canvas. Now, if you have worked with Microsoft Excel and set up some charts over there, you would know that in Excel, you can add something called data labels. In Tableau, you can do that by going to the label card and check the show mark labels, and that will give you the data labels. Now, when I check the mark show mark labels over here, Tableau is by default showing the numbers for the measure that are there in the visual. And in this case, it is the sales numbers. The great thing here about Tableau is that you can actually show any number in the label, even the ones which are not the part of the visual. For example, if in addition to sales, I want to show profit, I'll go and drag the profit to the labels card and you will see that it will start showing me profit. Now, what if I want to show both profit and sales? In order to do that, I'll drag the sales to the label as well. And now it's going to start showing me both the numbers. Now the fun doesn't end over here. There are so many ways you can customize the look and feel of the labels. I'll show you a few of them and then I would suggest you play around with the options available in the marks card or the label card and that will be the best way for you to completely drill the concepts into your mind. So to customize it I will go to the label card First of all, let's start with the font. I think it's pretty simple and basic. I don't need to go into the details. You can select any font, any size, any color that you like. Alignment basically will dictate how, where the labels sit in the visual or within the visual. So for example, if I center it, they will come into the center of the bar. If I left align it, of course, they will go left. If I keep it automatic, Tableau will automatically determine what's the best way to position the label. You can also play around with the direction. Or you can uh, play around with the vertical alignment and the wrap as well. Moving on, we have the option to decide which mark labels to show. So right now, all is selected, and that's why Tableau is showing the mark labels for all the bars. If you want, you can go with the minimum and maximum, which means that it will show only the marked labels for the biggest or the smallest amounts. Then you can go to selected, in which case marked labels will only be shown for the selected bar or the selected element of the visual. And the last option is to show the highlighted ones. If I go with this, then only the bars that will be highlighted will show the labels. For example, here I have highlighted three bars books, appliances, and furnishings, and these are showing the labels. If I unhighlight them by clicking anywhere on the canvas, the labels will go off. I'll go back to the default setting for the time being where I'll show all of them. Next, we can also customize the description of our labels. For example, in front of chairs, I can see the label for 335768 and 27,000. Now let's say I want to make these labels more descriptive in a way that I don't want to just show the numbers, but I also want the description of the measure names to appear as well so that the numbers become more understandable and intuitive. To do that, I will go back to the label card and right where we see text, there are three dots to the side. I'll click that. So this is how Tableau is displaying the labels right now. Instead of this, what I'll do is bring profit and at the bottom and here I will write sales semicolon and profit semicolon and just apply it so we can see how it will look like when you will click on the apply button it will just show you a preview on the on the chart and now once I click OK it will take effect Another quick tip which I wanted to cover was around how we can change the way the numbers appear on our charts. So for example, right now we can see the full number. I'll go to sales, right click on it, and then click on format. And over here I'll go to number, number custom. Here I can select the display units. I'll go with thousands. 
and maybe I'll just put one decimal place. And as you can see, the sales numbers have trimmed down and they're now showing in thousands. You can do the same with profit. Now, the great thing about formatting the numbers using this particular approach is that it hasn't impacted the default formatting of this measure. What I mean by that is that if I set up a new sheet and I drag the sales number into columns or let's say just label, you will see that it will still show me the full number, which means that the formatting that we did, that is the configuring the number to show in only 1000 display units, that has only impacted on this sheet. For rest of the other sheets, the sales number will show as a full number. This option allows you some flexibility if there are some charts where you want to show the full number for sales, where there, whereas there are other charts where you want to show the numbers in thousands, you can do that. However, if you want a certain number to always show in thousands or millions, rather than going into the marks card or anywhere in the visual, you can go into the data pane and go to the default properties and over there you will see the option for the number format. Once you click on it, it will give you the same options as we saw before, and then you can change the default formatting of that measure. Now, as the next step, let's move to the tool tips. First of all, I will remove all the text labels so the chart looks less busy, and we can easily look at the tool tips. By default, Tableau will show those dimensions and measures in the tool tip, which are part of the visual. In this case, those are sales and subcategory. Now let's say in addition to sales, I also want to show the profit as a part of the tooltip, but I don't want profit to be part of the entire visual or impact the bar chart. So again, as we did in case of labels, you can just drag the profit to the tooltip and there you go, you will be able to see profit. Now let's say instead of seeing the sales profit first and then sales, I want the sales to appear first and then profit. So again, I'll go inside the tooltip and then it will open for me this window. Here I can do as much customization as I want. So I'll just cut profit and put it at the bottom. And there we go. I can preview it as well, but I'll just click on OK. And there we go. Everything looks OK. Now let's customize the look and feel of our tooltips. In order to do that, click on the tooltip and here you can change the look and feel of your text uh, as per your likings. So as you can see, the styles of our tooltip text have changed. I'll press Ctrl Z to go back to the previous setting. Now there were several other options available in the tooltip menu. I think you might already have seen it, but let's go through them one by one to see what each of them does. So as far as the show tooltips is concerned, of course, it's pretty self-explanatory. If I uncheck it, then our visual will not show the tooltips. I'll press Ctrl Z and then it will start showing. Let's go back to the tooltip card. What other options do we have? So there is an option to exclude the include or exclude the command buttons. What are the command buttons? I'll click on cancel. When I select any particular data point on the visual, you will see that there are some command buttons appearing, keep only, exclude, and some other options that we can do, create a set, etc. If you don't want these command buttons to show up whenever you select a particular data point, you can go to the tooltip and uh, uncheck the include command buttons. The last option we have is allow selection by category. In order to drive this point home, let's create one more chart, which is a slightly more detailed. We'll go with the scatter plot to understand this point. So I'll click on cancel. Let's go to sheet 12. I think this was a random sheet that we had set up. I think we can just reuse it. I'll put sales in the columns. And if you recall, to create a scatter plot, we need two measures one of them in columns, one of them in rows, and then we can break this chart down into details by subcategory. So I'll drag subcategory to the details card. Now in the tooltip, right now I will only see these three items, that is subcategory, profits, sales. Let's drag category as well to the tooltip. So now we have these four things uh, as a part of the tooltip. To understand this data a little further, let me just create one quick table on the side. 
I'll drag category to the rows and subcategory as well. So you can see we have lots of cat subcategories and these subcategories are grouped into three categories, furniture, office supplies, technology. Going back to the scatter plot, each of these dots indicate one particular subcategory. This is copiers, which belongs to the category techno technology category. Then we have accessories. They also relate to category technology. Then we have binders, which relates to office supplies. Now we were studying about what does this option do, allow selection by category. If you keep this option checked, what you can do is, let's say I'll select binders and then I'll go into the tooltip and click on office supplies and that will select or highlight all the office supply items for me on the visual. So it's a pretty cool feature and I hope you like it. I'll go back to the previous sheet where we were as a last step, I wanted to cover one more trick which you can leverage when you're working with the tooltips in your visualizations. In tooltips, it's not necessary to show the data only in the default format which appears as a text. You can actually show another worksheet as a tooltip. This is particularly helpful when you have a chart that shows a snapshot in time, but you also want your user to be able to get information about the trend over time. For example, this bar chart shows the sales by subcategory for all the for the entire data set, which means that it's showing the results for all the full four years. But let's say I want my user to be able to get a bit of a knowledge about how is the trend of sales over time or over the four years. So in order to do that, I can actually show a line chart as a tooltip. If you recall, a few lectures back, we created a line chart, which is a still here. And we will use this chart to show in the tooltip of our bar chart. So I will go back to the bar chart and then go to the tooltip. There you will see an option for insert. Click on the insert, then go to sheets and select line. Here you will see now Tableau has added a description. It's basically a kind of a code which is indicating that First, Tableau will show the sheet, which is named line. So it's going to this sheet. The size of the visual will be this much and filter. So whatever are the fields that are there in this visual and the fields on which the user is hovering the mouse, those fields will apply as a filter to that line chart. This means that if I will hover my mouse on top of chairs, the line chart will only show the trend for chairs. And then after the chart, the Tableau will show all the details that are here, which were pre-existing as well. So let's click on OK and see the magic. Now, when I hover my mouse on top of chairs, it will give me the trend of sales for chairs over the last four years. And note that the default uh, tooltips, which were there before, are still there. When I go to phone, the line chart will change and it will only filter for phone. Same with storage and you can go on and on. Now, if you want to change the size of the tooltip or size of the line chart that is appearing in the tooltip, you can go to tooltip and change it from here. So for example, I'll make it 400 and 400. Click on OK. And it's slightly bigger than before. With this, we have completed our lecture on text labels and tooltips. I hope you would have enjoyed this one. I'll see you in the next one where we will build our first dashboard.